Ladies and gentlemen, the Shrek Gaming Telecom video. I think it's fair to say that E3 this year and perhaps the next 12 months in gaming are going to be very exciting for technology. Not only do we have the new graphics cards, which we've talked about ad nauseum recently, but we've got the upcoming impending release of the PS4 Neo, allegedly. It might just be a rumour, but it's looking pretty darn solid at the moment. And the next generation Xbox, codenamed Scorpio, once again, allegedly. These next generation consoles are going to be considerably more powerful than the vanilla systems that you've got at your homes right now. The Neo, for example, is about 2.25 times more powerful than the vanilla PS4, whereas the Scorpio is about 4.5 times more powerful than the vanilla Xbox One. That's quite the difference, to say the least. So, that brings up a question. What impact is that going to have in the quality of ports and the quality of graphics on the PC? So... To cut a long story short, the current consoles, the PS4 and Xbox One, still have a few tricks left up their sleeves. For example, asynchronous compute is definitely getting a lot of performance, for example, from physics, lighting, that type of jazz. But overall, they're already pretty much maxed out. That's with the amount of memory they've got, the amount of uh, GPU performance, the amount of CPU performance. They don't really have that much more left to give other than to optimize and to have developers get the absolute most out of the hardware performance by simply improving their engine and to understand better where they can shave off a few MS of rendering time here or there. The PC, meanwhile, is rocketing forward in terms of performance with the $200 uh, RX 4AC going to offer about 6 teaflops-ish of performance and it is going to be quite quite average when you start factoring in the GTX 1070s and the Vega 10s of this world which are going to be released in the upcoming months or have already been released. So I guess the question I've got is how much of a difference are we going to see with the graphical jump when the Scorpio is released. Now, it's fair to say that it's very easy to eat up the difference between 1080p uh, difference in GPU performance by just jumping up resolution. For example, 1080p to 1440p, it swallows up a lot of the console's extra power. So, for example, if the developers opt to run at say 1440p for those folks who want to run at a 14 as uh, a 4k display then they could by all means do that gpus if you're running at 60 fps versus 30 fps once again the gpu has exactly half the amount of time to render every frame of animation therefore the system could have half of its performance eaten up right there just by targeting that higher frame rate so that's definitely one way to go but the key is that if developers start to do that, if they do opt to, once again, push for higher resolution, if they decide to push for higher quality lighting, if they decide to push for 60 FPS, it means that, in theory, developers will put more time into those better animations, they will put more time into improved texture quality, they'll put better time into, let's say, the quality of lighting. Now, if you do some Googling around, this is from early 2013 and slash 2012, there were a lot of murmurings concerning SVOGI. I don't want to get into a super complex topic of what SVOGI is, but essentially it was an upcoming lighting technique which was going to be improved in a whole bunch or, uh, sorry, implemented into a whole bunch of engines. Um, it's basically full dynamic lighting. And it was removed um, from UE4 back in 2013. Now, there are certainly tools to start implementing it and all of that stuff, but we're talking back in 2013 here. It was removed, and there was a reason behind that. Um, quite simply, the systems just weren't powerful enough. That's what the, that's what the murmurs were, and Epic semi-confirmed it via forum posts but they didn't officially confirm it via like you know PR statements and all of this stuff it was it was all a bit messy 
And other developers have, of course, talked about the fact that they're already hitting the limits of what they're capable of on this current hardware. As I said earlier, they're optimizing now. They're trying to get the most out of it. But because PCs forever march forward, we eventually are going to be at this point where developers have this choice. How much work do they put in to only go for a certain amount of audience? For the PC, this could actually be really, really awesome. And for consoles, it could actually mean, for the point of view of a PC gamer, that games look even better. And because developers are able to push those settings onto consoles, or at least the majority of those settings, obviously PC hardware is still going to be more powerful than the Scorpio or the Neo, we already know that. But because developers are able to utilize a lot more of those settings, a lot more of those textures, theoretically, PC games should get more love. Now, the optimization is still a bit in the air because obviously the benefit of a single architecture, in this case the Neo or the Scorpio, is that still they can push the hardware to the limits. But, of course, the PC doesn't have that. However, PC with DirectX 12, with Vulkan and other APIs, we should still start seeing some optimization, especially if NVIDIA AMD are starting to give them better tools, which obviously both companies are starting to do in spades. They're starting to get better profiling tools out. They're starting to be able to help developers to figure out where the black holes are in their performance pipelines when they're trying to render uh, render graphics on the PC. And with the once again the adoption of Vulkan and DirectX 12 starting to increase, it means that we should start to eliminate things like draw calls. Remember when draw calls were a whole thing back in 2014? When everyone was talking about the limitation of draw calls, draw calls, draw calls, draw calls. And now it's not such a big deal because we're starting to get around that with modern APIs and modern technology. So that's, that's obviously a good thing. For the point of view of a console though, it should also be quite nice because developers theoretically will have already, if they're targeting the PC as well, and from what we're hearing about the PS4, um, oh, sorry, the Xbox Scorpio, they will, of course, be wanting to use it almost as like an entry-level PC, as like that mid to mid, uh, well, I guess low to mid-range PC, where folks who want to get into the Windows 10 ecosystem and maybe don't want to buy a PC, can't afford a PC, they want it in their living room, so they just want a smaller box. They've got the Scorpio room, but developers were still going to be able to push out software with Microsoft's ecosystem in mind. Ultimately, we're not going to know fully how things change until, let's say, another year from now. And let's face it, there is a possibility as of the time I'm recording this, which is, you know, a week or so before E3 officially starts, there is a possibility that all of these rumours have been a load of bullshit. It's very unlikely. And to be honest, I wouldn't be surprised if the Scorpio is not officially announced. I think we're going to get some announcement, whether it's going to be the Slimline Xbox. It's going to be kind of funny if in three weeks' time, you guys, someone's checking this video out and said, hey, this happened and that happened and he was totally wrong about that, which is probable. At the end of the day, all we're doing is making predictions based upon what industry insiders have leaked to the internet. And let's face it, how much information they decide to release, how we decide to interpret that information, and finally, if that information that they even released at that time was even up to date is unknown. For example, it could be a developer had access to an early PS4 Neo kit, or maybe Microsoft, uh, Sony was still bringing up the hardware, they were just using it, the 40 flop GPU as proof of concept or the 2.1 gigahertz CPU as a proof of concept, and in the end, they decided to go for a faster CPU or a faster GPU. We just don't know. So all we can do is make some guesses based upon the information. My point being though, when that information is released, we're gonna certainly know a lot more, but it's fun speculating, I think. I think we should start seeing some rather large improvements. So I guess that brings us almost full circle. It brings us back to what the hell happens with the PS4? What the hell happens with the Xbox One, the vanilla, the launch systems? Well, 
I guess it depends on how developers really start to embrace this. One of the reasons that I'm pretty convinced that the PS4 and Neo may be a success, uh, sorry, the PS4 Neo might coexist rather, is because developers are doing a lot more cross-development. And ironically, the fact that the PC is doing so well at the moment and getting a lot of excl uh, getting a, a lot of titles developed on it and the consoles may be a benefit to the consoles, these high-end consoles in the long run, because it means developers are more used to working on multi-platform solutions. And they can essentially, and I'm vastly simplifying things here, but they can essentially say, okay, we're releasing this on the Scorpio and the original Xbox and the PC, so the original Xbox can handle these graphical settings. And let's say 900p, 30 FPS, and medium quality textures, medium quality lighting, blah blah blah. This is in like a year's time. And the Scorpio can handle 1080p, 60 FPS, with high quality textures, high quality lighting, and PC. You've got all of those graphics options available, obviously, depending on your rig. So you could choose between 900p, 720p, 1440p, 4K. You've got all of the various lighting options and what have you. And obviously the frame rate will run at whatever is capable your machine is capable of. That's kind of cool. And theoretically it should give developers a lot of, uh, a lot of incentive. Um... I guess it really depends on the developer and how much work they're willing to put into both the PC and the Scorpio or the PS4 and the Neo differences. Because for example with Sony what they've said is, supposedly, to developers they need to have a Neo mode which means that at the minimum the game runs on Neo but the differences or how much of a difference there must be between the Neo version and the vanilla version is unknown. For example, would Sony simply be happy if the game ran, but maybe with slightly higher native resolution? Does there have to be a large difference in texture quality? Does there have to be X, Y, or Z? Probably not. And this makes a lot of sense from the point of view of an indie developer. I know I've harked on about this one game a lot, but let's say you were developing Limbo for the PS4. Yeah, you could potentially do a few things here. You could improve the quality maybe of the of the hand-drawn artwork by going to a slightly higher resolution. You might be able to do a few things here or there with the animation quality, but realistically, it's not really pushing the GPU of the PS4 anyway. Go ahead and Google the system specifications of Limbo. You notice it's not exactly going to be super taxing to even the previous generation of systems, let alone the PS4, the Xbox One, or, or a modern day PC. It's just not. So really, to have a large dif graphical difference between it, so I think it's going to be on a case-by-case -case basis often, and what developers really feel comfortable with, what the size of the studio is, and, the, and how many people are working on the game, and how much they actually feel the install base is. But it could be kind of handy. It could be that the PC helps break the chicken and egg cycle of consoles in that it helps that early adoption, it helps developers to have that extra incentive to push better graphics onto those games, and vice versa, it could also help the chicken and egg situation of giving developers yet another reason to improve the graphics of the PC, because they're going to have to do it anyway for the Scorpio or the Neo. I guess finally, my last point for all of this, is that it's good for us as gamers, whether you're a PC gamer, whether you're a console gamer, where you don't just give a shit and you're just playing on whatever the damn platform is that a game happens to be on. The only caveat um, from all of this is if it's a platform exclusive. So for the sake of argument, if it's on the PS4 only, then obviously the PC being available to act as, I guess, an incentive to further improve the graphics isn't going to be there. But then, if it's a PS4 exclusive, or an Xbox exclusive, one would assume Microsoft or Sony would step in, and they would say, hey, let's, let's work together on this to improve the graphics, to improve the performance of the game, to make sure that it shows off the systems that we've got out there in the best light possible. At least that's my hope. Anyway, 
Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.